Okay, let's listen in. Oh, she's just left. <laughs> You are allowed to come and drop off the flowers as we do the ritual. All right, if you are just joining us, these are live visuals from Imalashleni. This, of course, the home of the late minister in the presidency, Jackson Mtembu, who died from COVID-19 related complications. We are seeing government officials uh, forming a line, of course, in cars due to COVID-19 regulations to pay their last respects. Uh, this is their way of honoring his legacy and saying that they are doing so responsibly. Our reporter Heidi Jokos is there. Heidi, if I can bring you in. We just saw Pumla Williams, who worked very closely with the late Minister Jackson Mtembu. She spoke. We missed it. So just tell us what she said. Yes, indeed, uh, Shahan, quite an emotional. Um, it's, yeah, it's quite an emotional moment here because um, GCIS Pumla Williams spoke uh, in Vernac. She explained how uh, Jackson Mtembu was a selfless man, always willing to help. She worked very closely with him um, and just going through some of the important points about his character, the fact that he was always willing to engage, a true communicator. And uh, as she was about to start speaking in English, she just broke down and said, I just cannot speak anymore and has since left. So uh, she's, of course, quite emotional and it's understandable given the fact that she worked very closely with the late Jackson and Temple. And what you're seeing right now is a motorcade where people have lined up and given the fact that it is, um, you know, these are the times one, one isn't able to actually get out of the vehicle and um, actually go and hug and, you know, pay your condolences and respects to the family because of the COVID-19 protocol. So what you're seeing here is government officials all lined up waiting to uh, drop off flowers to the family and of course uh, some government officials will say a word or two um, we just we don't have a program but one can uh, just get a sense of what exactly is going on and how uh, many have gathered here that worked very closely with um, the late Jackson Temple yeah so let's talk about the family of course they've received much love today in Imalatleni lots of people coming through we're seeing people uh, sign something there, probably messages for Jackson and Tembu. Um, you spoke to Michael Jackson, his brother, earlier. What are they saying? How are they feeling? Of course, we know they're sad. It's a natural thing. But how do they want him to be remembered in this country? They want him to be remembered uh, as a true communicator, somebody who was true to his roots, who was true to uh, what he stood for, and that was to serve the people of South Africa. And uh, despite the challenges that uh, he faced every single day, he made sure that he would help wherever possible. And uh, just hearing and seeing his brother speak to us, it was a very difficult moment for him uh, to speak. Uh, and he, of course, tried to hold back his tears on a number of occasions. But he said that his brother uh, is 10 years older than him. Uh, and he, you know, he, he said that they were twins, they were inseparable, and he saw him as a father figure. Uh, he groomed him to be the man that he is today, and he says he feels completely lost uh, without his brother. And he also said that, uh, you know, he wishes that it was him that had left and not his brother because of the role that his brother plays uh, in society, in government, but also here in this small town of Emelakleni. And uh, Shahan, I just want to go back to who's involved in this drive-by and, and uh, who's lined up here. We understand that, of course, the presidency, uh, government communication, GCIS, as we saw Pumla Williams uh, on the stand. We also understand the Department of Planning, Monitoring and Evaluation, Brand South Africa, Media Development and Diversity Agency, the National Youth Development Agency, the National Planning Commission and Statistics South Africa. And just looking at that list, one, one, get a sense, one, one can get a sense of how uh, Jackson and Temple worked very closely with these various departments as he was 
uh, a true communicator, not just uh, during this very difficult time that the country is going through, COVID-19 pandemic, uh, as he was the communicator in the face of making sure that he communicates to South Africans, but uh, just overall how many would lean on him for that support and how he would always fight for uh, communicating and pushing uh, to communicate with everybody, and that was his main goal and uh, you know and priority. So, uh, as you can see, people are pulling up, dropping off flowers, and uh, just paying their respects. Uh, yeah, and Heidi, I must correct myself. It's Michael M. Tembo is having a stupid moment, but uh, Jackson M. Tembo would have wanted me to be a good communicator, right, and make that correction. <laughs> So uh, let's just talk about you spending your time there during the day and speaking to his neighbors as well, Heidi. How are they describing him? Yes, most certainly. I, I explained this earlier on when uh, I drove into Emelacheni and I myself come from here. So at least uh, Jackson and Timber and I had something in common. Um, but, you know, when I drove in here, it actually hit me that... Um, he is no more and you could almost feel it in the air it was very different driving in uh, and when we got to the township of Ackerville where he uh, stays uh, we understand that um, you know the community was waiting outside already many had started coming in to pay their respects uh, of course it's a very difficult time Sean because of COVID-19 protocols so everybody's trying to keep their distance but uh, you know, deep down, everybody just wants to hug and, and, and cry together. But many have described him as uh, a true leader in this community. And the fact that uh, the National Youth uh, Planning Committee is, you know, also in this drive in uh, to show their support and their respect uh, speaks to the kind of man he was in the community. Uh, he always wanted to uplift the youth. Uh, we know when we spoke to um, the father, the reverend father from his church, um, he explained how he was constantly uh, willing to engage, would walk to church, would play with the boys, play soccer, go to the car washes. Uh, so he was a very involved and committed man, uh, you know, just because he held a very high position in government. That didn't stop him from willing to give back to the community. Yeah. So Heidi, of course, the presidency issuing a statement, giving some details on the funeral on Sunday. Just take us through that statement as we watch these visuals. Yes, indeed. So we do understand that um, the late Jackson Temple has been uh, given uh, an official and provincial uh, uh, funeral, which is category one, uh, serving the ministers. We also understand that the presidency has asked for the national flag to be flown at half mast at every flag station in the country from tomorrow, the 23rd of January, until the evening on the day of the funeral of the 24th of uh, January. We also know that uh, there will be a memorial that will be held tomorrow at GCIS. We know that's set to take place at 1 o'clock. We're not sure if that's going to be virtual or if we'll be allowed uh, to be there. And then we understand that his funeral will take place on Sunday. Uh, of course, government reiterating the fact that they are trying to adhere to all regulations, uh, given the fact that uh, we are in the middle of a pandemic and, of course, uh, we're in level, adjusted level three. But uh, in terms of his funeral, he will be laid to rest in his hometown of Emelachleni in Pumalanga on Sunday, the 24th of January. And we understand that proceedings will commence at 9 o'clock. And what's so significant about this, Shahan, is that uh, Jackson M. Temple has a house here in Emelachleni, but he also has a house in Nalspreit. And this was when he moved over to be the NEC of Public Works and Transport, and that's when he decided to move to Nalspreit as he was constantly based there. But when he lost his mother about two years ago, she um, just stays about two streets or stayed about two streets away from uh, this home that you seeing now and we understand this is why uh, there was a wish for him to be buried close to his mother so this is why the decision was taken for him to be buried here in Emelachleni where he was born and raised where it all begins or where it all began and where now it's all going to end and he will be laid uh, to rest on Sunday. All right, if you are just joining us, you're watching live visuals from outside the home of the late minister, Jackson Mtembu. That, of course, is Pumla Williams. She spoke earlier for a very short time. 
uh, expressing her shock and sadness at his death. She worked very closely with the minister. He, of course, was in charge of government communications and played an important role in getting our COVID-19 message out to the South African public. Uh, Jackson Mtembu passed away yesterday from COVID-19 complications. Uh, these are the people who worked with him, who have decided to come to his home to pay their last respects. And obviously they can't do it because of COVID-19 regulations, so they formed a motorcade. Uh, cars are going up to this uh, position outside the late minister's home where there's a big picture of him where they can sign uh, a book, it seems, to write their messages of support and also honoring him for the man he was, the man who stood so firm against corruption within the ANC, within this uh, government, and of course, a man who stood for honesty and integrity. Uh, whoever you speak to about Jackson and Tembu, they would tell you about the gentleman he was. Uh, Tula Sizwese Mulane described him as the gentleman of politics. I spoke to the Deputy State Security Minister Zizi Kodwa earlier, saying that he was a master communicator and taught him uh, most of what he knows in communications. Zizi Kodwa and Jackson and Tembu, of course, had the tough task of defending the ANC, especially during uh, wrong times. And uh, Zizi saying to us that he knows that Jackson and Tembu always said, when we make mistakes, we need to own up to it and apologize. And that's the man he was. He stood for the truth and he stood for integrity. So you are watching live visuals from outside uh, Jackson and Tembu's home. Heidi Jokos is there for us. So Heidi, we're seeing people very carefully come out one by one because it's a, a thing about numbers, right? We're not allowed to gather in large numbers. But this is how people will try to pay their last respects and honor Jackson and Tembu. This is the best they can do right now. Yes, indeed, this is the best they can do right now, given the uh, COVID-19 regulations and the fact that we are in adjusted level three lockdown. But as you rightfully mentioned, Shahan, uh, one by one, people get out of their vehicles, uh, they sanitize their hands, and they pick up a pen and write their message uh, in a book that, of course, the fa it will be handed over to the family. And, and I think this is possibly one of the, the best ways that uh, one can pay their respects and condolences to the family under these very difficult and trying times. And uh, just hearing people speak passing by uh, earlier on, uh, their number one objective and focus was to make sure that uh, COVID-19 regulations are adhered to, with many saying that this is what Jackson Mtembu would have wanted. He would have wanted to make sure that everybody sticks to the rules and regulations. And also his brother saying that, um, when I asked his brother, uh, Michael Mtembu, he said to me, I asked him, what was the last conversation that you had with your brother? And he said uh, it included the fact that he was advising me to sanitize and social distance. So um, the fact that you're seeing a chair, of course, speaks to how everyone's trying to stick to the rules and regulations. And cars, I can tell you, Shahan, are, are lining up. It's a very long queue in the streets. So people are, are truly coming to pay their respects. Yeah, let's talk a bit more about uh, the memorial service. Of course, people won't be able to attend that, but it will be something that will be broadcast online for South Africans to watch, I imagine. Yes, most certainly. So there's a bit of confusion with regards to whether or not this memorial service uh, will be held uh, virtually or if they, we will be able to physically attend. And we understand that it's going to be at the auditorium of GCIS. Uh, we also understand that uh, a number of political uh, representatives will be attending this memorial service. Uh, and I think it will also be a way for many people to say goodbye, as we know that numbers will be kept uh, during the funeral. Even though it is a state funeral, it's very important for these regulations to be adhered to, as the, the presidency's statement clearly stipulates that uh, they need to adhere to the regulations. But, uh, Shahan, we also know that uh, many people are still gathering here, uh, not only in this um, in this drive-in, but also we know that the Deputy Secretary General of the ANC, Jesse Duarte, will be here tomorrow. We're not sure. We thought it was tonight, but uh, we're not sure. But uh, the fact remains that everybody wants to come and say uh, their last goodbyes and pay their respects to the family, who is clearly very distraught.
If you are just joining us, you're watching uh, live visuals, a motorcade, of, of course, forming outside the home of the late minister, Jackson Mtembu. Uh, people coming to write their messages of support for the family, honoring his legacy, uh, bringing flowers. And if you missed this earlier, the presidency issuing a statement a short while ago, and I'll go through it. It says the late minister in the presidency, Jackson Mtembu, will be honored with an official funeral category one at his home in Imalatleni in Mpumalanga on Sunday, the 24th of January. Minister Mtembu passed away on Thursday from COVID-related complications. The state official and provincial official funeral policy accords official funerals category one to serving the ministers. The national flag will be flown at half-mast at every flag station in the country from tomorrow, the 23rd of Jan, until the evening of the day of the funeral on the 24th of January. Minister Mtembu contributed immensely to the liberation struggle as an anti-apartheid activist, student leader, and unionist for which he was subjected to harassment and detention by apartheid security forces. He occupied several st uh, strategic and leadership roles in the democratic South Africa. He served the African National Congress as spokesperson from 1995 to 1997 and from 2009 to 2014. Someone is speaking right now, so we can listen in. So we are saying that the loss of a leader is such a unique, such a rare quality is a loss of what for me to Apologies for the audio on this incoming feed. Of course, uh, more tributes for the late Minister Jackson and Tembu. Uh, people are driving up to his home where they're speaking to the family, writing messages of support. I think the audio is back. Let's listen in. Um, you are not alone. Um, the government, all of the government is with you and the whole nation um, is, is with you uh, at, this, at this point. At uh, Dinan, city Lala Ngotolo, Jackson Tembu Mbelasi, Siabong. So short messages is what we're seeing as people come to pay their last respects to the late Jackson and Tembu, the minister and the presidency. Uh, that speaker saying to the family that they are not alone, that government and the nation is behind them. And that really is the case, right? We've seen uh, the media, people from all walks of life in South Africa paying tribute to um, the late minister Jackson and Tembu. Uh, he, of course, was someone who could make you laugh during very difficult times. He was also the face of government's COVID-19 communications. We saw him just a couple of weeks ago 
uh, telling people to be safe in South Africa. His family saying that was the message he preached to them. Zizi Kodwa telling us earlier that he spoke to the minister when he found out that he was infected with COVID-19 and he told him that he will get through this. Unfortunately, that was not the case. But the minister is a strong man who fought for freedom. His legacy should be one that is honored in South Africa because of his integrity and his fight against corruption. And the minister, of course, is someone who will receive a Category 1 official funeral, and that will be on Sunday, starting at 9 o'clock. We're expecting it to be a virtual ceremony so that South Africans across the country can actually watch it. So that's the end of that motorcade. We've seen uh, several government officials come to pay their last respects to the late minister, Jackson and Tembu. Uh, Heidi Jakos, of course, this is a tribute to a great man and also to the family who's going through a very difficult period. Yes, indeed, Shahan. Uh, I must say that it was quite an emotional moment just seeing everybody um, lining up and... Uh, and uh, paying their respects. Of course, we know that uh, this is um, the only way that they can due to COVID-19 regulations. But these people that were lining up and dropping off flowers and writing a message in the book were people that worked very closely with Jackson and Tembu, the communicator who, um, you know, made a difference in everybody's life and uh, would challenge you when you were wrong, but would also listen when you had a, uh, a question, even if it was a tough question. And uh, just seeing all those uh, flowers and how many people actually arrived and dropped off flowers and wrote a message. Um, it just goes to show how people truly uh, came all out to pay their respects despite the fact that there are restrictions and regulations. So I must say everybody around here looks quite uh, sad and just looking at the flowers and looking at that big uh, picture of him in the frame, uh, it all feels so uh, unreal yet so real because this is a moment where everybody has to say goodbye if they are unable to attend the funeral or the memorial. All right, we're going to leave it right there. Heidi Jokos will continue to bring you live visuals from Imalakhleni. That's, of course, being the home of the late minister Jackson Ntembu. We're back in a moment. Stay with us.